So today we're going to have a conversation about the digital future of Nintendo Switch. And I want to apologize because there was going to be an episode of Prime Comments today, but due to some unforeseen circumstances uh, in my personal life, I, mostly with my children, I'm not going to get too deep into what happened, and also my grandfather who's in the hospital, um, it's been a, been a bit of a tough day. So I didn't have time to get a Prime Comments done. But maybe I will get some preliminary work done so I can have it out early tomorrow. I'm also happy to say that we will have a new episode of the podcast landing tomorrow as well. Or uh, right now, actually, if you want to hear the full audio podcast uh, for this upcoming week, you can actually head over to patreon.com slash Nintendo Prime. And for $5 a month, you gain early access to the full audio of it, the podcast. Anyways, we're going to talk about Nintendo Switch and the digital future because in a recent video I did, where I kind of criticized Rich from Review Tech USA for his stance against a Nintendo enthusiast article. And if you go to the YouTube card in the top right corner, uh, you will see a link to that video and be able to <laughs> kind of assess for yourself whether or not I did a good job arguing against his points. But in reading the comments on that, which was something I was going to respond to on Prime Comments, I realize that we need to have a deeper conversation about the digital future of Switch because as a portable device I think all of us can agree the most convenient way to game portably is through digital downloads. I, I don't think that's even a point that's up for debate uh, and it's true that at least through the 3DS era that the best way to game on Nintendo, or at least the most convenient way, or the easiest way, or the way that Nintendo always kind of made you do it, was with physical cartridges. You know, we, we've had cartridges on all of Nintendo's handheld systems, and even though the 3DS uh, you had an ability to put an SD card or a micro SD card inside of it to expand the storage, and there are plenty of you out there that did just that, reality is Nintendo was still heavily pushing the... Uh, physical cartridges they only included like a two gigabyte or a four gigabyte uh sd card in with the product so inevitably most consumers would have to buy cartridges instead of digital downloads but that was back in 2011 when that system released and even though there's been revisions since then including the new 2ds xl this year reality is that 2017 we have a brand new nintendo portable uh that's a hybrid system that also works as a home console and for the most part, I've been pleasantly happy with the fact that right now, 100%, but probably around 90% by the end of life of Nintendo Switch's games do not require installs. Now, I have a feeling that the reason that we need extra memory for NBA 2K18, the reason that we need extra expansion memory for... <laughs> Uh, Resident Evil, the the second game, you know, the, the, or Resident Evil Revelations, Re Revelations 2 is a digital version. Uh, the reason that we need the expandable memory on that is because third parties are, they, one, they make really, really big games. Two, they don't want to use the biggest version of Nintendo's cartridges for the Switch because they're expensive. And Nintendo could do something about that, but they probably won't. Uh, and we, in fact, there's been games bigger than NBA 2K18 uh, that have already released in Japan that use those bigger cartridges. So we know they exist. They could use it, but they're not going to. And reality is there are games bigger than 32 gigabytes. Uh, imagine if Nintendo had Destiny or Destiny 2 on their system. You're not putting that on a 32 gig cartridge. Uh, you might be able to put a bunch of the install files on there, but they're going to have to download a ton of stuff. And the Switch is Nintendo's first system that cannot play every single game released on it out of the box. Most of Nintendo systems, and I'm sure you might be able to find some outlying examples where you needed an accessory on Wii or something to play, uh, to play something, but often when you needed an accessory, the game you needed it for came with it. Just like back in the day, Majora's Mask needed the expansion pack, and the initial run of Majora's Mask came with the expansion pack for your Nintendo 64. So Nintendo's always been good about giving you exactly what you need to play with every game. But the games that are releasing, like NBA 2K18, the physical version is not coming, at least we don't think it's coming, 
with a micro SD card included to allow you to play it. So what happens is you buy a Nintendo Switch and suddenly you do not have the ability to play the full versions of every single game released on the platform. Not just because there's not enough space to fit multiple games on there, but even if you just want enough space to make sure you can fit even one game, not even one, you know, there's going to be some single games that cannot fit on the system. And it's a problem. And I'm not going to sit back here and pretend this isn't a problem. And it's a huger problem if you go exclusively digital. I want to make a stance clear right now. I do not think the Switch has enough internal storage, period. And I know I kept calling it memory. I realize memory is actually like the RAM, and I'm actually just talking about hard drive space and storage space. I get it. There's a difference. Sorry for using the term memory, but uh, it's it's one of those things that is was frustrating with the Wii U, but still the Wii U's physical games didn't require any installs, including third-party games that were big because they used kind of uh, Nintendo's own variation of a Blu-ray disc. So they could fit the entire game on those discs besides DLC. And there was plenty of room for DLC for any single game. So even the Wii U didn't have this problem with their 32 gigs. But now we have this issue with Switch because of the limitation on the size of the carts. And yes, Nintendo could create a cartridge that can hold 64 gigs. They can do that. that that's not something, you know, and Nintendo, in theory, could create cartridges that hold up to 2 terabytes if they want. But they'd be so stupidly expensive that third parties aren't going to use it. And we're even seeing... Uh, instances where the physical copies of games are starting to cost more money. Uh, L.A. Noir was just announced, but it's $10 more expensive on Switch than it is on every other platform for the physical version. Why is that? Because the cartridge itself is more expensive. Now, in hindsight, if that's just because they're using the 32 gigabyte cartridge, I'm actually okay with that. I would pay extra to not have to install or download any game from the physical version. I think when you buy a physical version outside of patches, you shouldn't need to install things for the game beyond patches and DLC. Uh, so I'm actually okay paying a $10 premium, but I understand in a marketplace that doesn't play well. And digitally, 32 gigabytes is a joke for home console quality games. Yes, you could fit Breath of the Wild on there. Yes, I, I, I think I fit Breath of the Wild, Mario Kart 8, and Splatoon 2. But, like, that's it. I, I really cannot put much on there besides some dinky indie games. And for an all-digital future, I never expected Nintendo with Switch to give us 500 gigabytes. You know, they're not going to give us what Xbox and PlayStation have. I think Nintendo with the Switch made... Three, I guess, three kind of critical errors, I guess. Uh, one of them is that they released a system that didn't have enough internal memory for even physical games that were going to require installs. Nintendo had to know about this before launch, so the fact that it didn't come with 64 minimum is a joke. Number two, Nintendo could have given us... Um, they could have encouraged people to customize their switches. Uh, they, they could have included ports inside the system, because it's really not that difficult to take apart, where people could plug in like M.2 SSDs if we want. Now, I'm not saying that's what all of us are going to do, and I understand that M.2 SSDs can be expensive, but it's still another storage upgrade option that a lot of people opt for. There are people with the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One that literally go in right away, take out the internal hard drives, and install SSDs. It creates faster boot times. And, you know, even with micro SD cards, uh, you need to get a higher end one if you want decent read speeds that are going to come close to matching what the cartridge matches or what it matches reading directly off the internal storage space. Otherwise, you're going to have increased load times, which I know some people aren't going to care about that stuff. But for an all digital future, you kind of do care about it. And number three, they should have obviously released a model that came with an SD card. Even if that model, let's say it was $100 more. So you have your $299 bundle with the 32 gigs, or what I feel should have been 64 and then you have your $400 model. But your $400 model comes with a 256 or even a 400 because Nintendo, with, with mass production and big orders, could have gotten probably one of those new 400 gigabyte SSDs with 300 megabyte read speeds and included that with the system. And I feel like because Nintendo hasn't done that, it's made the all-digital future on Switch extremely difficult to stomach. And I, I don't know what to do at this point. I don't know what Nintendo should do. I understand why they did the 32 gigs. I've always understood why. I've understood everything. I understand Nintendo's actually pushing physical more. But it's, 
It's a scary thought that as we move closer and closer to digital, the switch seems to be moving further and further away from digital. And I know a lot of people sort of think this isn't a big deal. Just buy your micro SD cards. And, you know, I get it. I'm going to be buying my micro SD cards too, multiple of them. But really, out of the box, Nintendo should have included or at least included an option for a bundle that would give people a discount to get that kind of storage. As I said, if they could have had a 299 version with 64 gigs, which I think needs to be the minimum, I think they need to double the internal storage to ensure there are zero issues that you could play every single game on Nintendo Switch out the gate. Uh, and then if they include made a 399 version that came, you know, either with a higher internal storage, say, say they gave you 400 gigs internal storage or 500 gigs or whatever, or a 400 or a 256 or a 400 gig, uh, really fast uh, micro SD card included, like they do with 3DS. I know they're really dinky micro SD cards, but you get my point. They could have included one that had a bunch of storage as well. Uh, and they could really even come out next year and start including uh, micro SD cards with the base model as well if they want. I don't, I don't know. Nintendo has a lot of ways to do it, but I understand uh, in a world where digital is great and on mobile technology, all of us play everything digitally on our cell phones and everything, uh, that it is an inconvenience with the Switch to have to lug around game cartridges. Now, I will note that unlike... Unlike phones, and this is kind of a point in the favor of cartridges, you're not, at least you shouldn't be just chucking your Switch in your backpack, right? It has a plastic screen. It definitely wasn't made, even though you can fit it in your pocket, it definitely wasn't made to be pocketed. It wasn't made to just be chucked in your backpack. It was made to be put in a case. And because you have to put it in a case, it's not that hard for cases to include storage. In fact, Every single Switch case I've seen out there includes physical game storage. So, again, it's an inconvenience to swap out cartridges, um, but it's already inconvenient to bring your Switch with you in comparison to a cell phone. So, uh, I guess that's a point where Nintendo still has a point to be pushing physical, and I'm glad they haven't abandoned the physical medium. But, obviously, personally, I would love to live in an all-digital age with Switch, and I can. I have to spend quite a bit of money to do it, but I can live in that age. And I wish Nintendo would have just made that age a little bit easier. And I don't think there's anything Nintendo's going to do now. As I said, I've, I've made some suggestions. But I think if they ever release a revision of the Nintendo Switch, whether it has a Tegra X2 or not, I'm hoping that one of the big things I do with that revision is realize there are people who are willing to pay more for your system if it includes a significant increase in memory. If they could somehow get 500 gigs of flash memory inside that system... You better believe if they just if they charge only a hundred dollars more, those things are gonna fly off the shelf for people that specifically want an all digital future. But I don't know. Maybe that's just me. You guys, let me know if you have a solution for uh, trying to go completely 100% digital on Nintendo Switch. Anyways, folks, I am Nathaniel Ruffle Jans from Nintendo Prime. If you like this video, you know what to do. And if you dislike this video, hit that dislike button. Subscribe for more. And as always, folks, I will catch you in the next one.